What's going on everybody? This is Brian from SneakerFiles.com recapping the news and before I run down some of the highlights like always greatly appreciate a thumbs up and if you're new here make sure to subscribe by hitting the red button below. Now to go over a few of those highlights we have details on the Air Jordan 1 High OG Rebellion Air which is an attempt from Jordan brand to create a new band shoe. Definitely more on that later on in the video. Also, new details on the Air Jordan 3 camo that's releasing later this year and the Air Jordan 1 High 85 College Navy aka Georgetown. That pair will release sometime in 2022. More on that later on in the video. Now we have a lot more from Jordan brand, a good amount from Nike and one thing from Adidas. And now without wasting too much more of your time, let's jump into the news. As we look ahead to fall and holiday releases, we got another one from Yeezy, specifically the Yeezy Boost 700, and this pair is being called Wash Orange. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the Yeezy line, and this probably is the reason why, and that's because this pair strongly resembles that of the Wave Runner. So what I noticed is there's a lot of colorways that are very similar that release as well as just plain colorways. And yes, you can make an argument that Jordan brand does it, but I'm more of a fan of Jordan brand versus Yeezy. So that's why I'm going to always favor that. But to go over the pair, they will feature a mixture of mesh, leather, and suede. Reflective will hit the three stripes branding underneath the mesh. And then we have orange on the midsole and a black rubber outsole. So the pair is expected to release in October and the retail price will be 240. Honestly, it seems like the LeBron 8 South Beach is never going to release in the States. Now they have dropped overseas and last time I checked, which was a few weeks ago, the resale price wasn't that bad. But of course, I would rather buy it retail. I'm sure a lot of you would as well. And what was expected to release on July 10th has now been pushed back. So the new release date is July 21st. Hopefully we don't see another release date change, but hey, you never know. And the retail price will be 200. Nike Basketball has unveiled release dates for the Space Jam, a new legacy collection. And I'm not going to go in any particular order as I go over these releases, but all of them release either a day or two apart from each other. And what pair wasn't included is the LeBron 8 Space Jam or the LeBron 19. So what we're really going over is the Air Force One Lows and the LeBron 18 Low. First up is the Nike Air Force One Low computer chip. This pair features glow in the dark detailing as well as Space Jam graphics on the panels and overlays similar to the LeBron 8. Now this pair is scheduled to release on July 16th for 120. Next is the Nike Air Force One Toon Squad. This was the first pair, I believe, from the collection to leak. And there is a few differences between the adult and grade school sizing, at least when you're comparing to the official images. Now, the main difference is the location of Lola and Bugs Bunny on the swoosh. On the adult version, it'll be more in the middle, but on the GS pairs, it'll actually overlap the start of the swoosh. Now, there isn't any mention of them being Velcro, so I don't think you can move them around. I think it just stays as is. And the release date for this pair is July 16th, and they'll retail at 120 now to the LeBron 18 lows. First up, we have the Bugs Bunny Marvin the Martian pair. It comes in a mismatched theme. We also have Marvin the Martian and Bugs on the insoles. And across the air units, we have written, this makes me very angry and what's up doc. Releasing July 16th for 160. Next up, we have the LeBron 18 low Lola Bunny. This is a grade school exclusive and it features Summit White on the base along with pink which represents her fur. We have Toon Squad branding on the tongue, graphics on the insoles, and let's do this on the air unit. Dropping July 16th for 130. Next up is the LeBron 18 Low, Sylvester, and Tweety. We also have the characters on the insoles, Toon Squad on the tongue. On the inside of the right tongue, we have Tweety's eyes. On the left, we have Sylvester's hand and writing on the air units. So this pair drops July 16th for 160. Last up, we have two versions releasing. And the first one is the Xbox. Nike LeBron 18 Low, Wild E Coyote, and Roadrunner bundle pack, which also comes with the Xbox controller. Now, if you're a fan of the shoes and 
you don't want an Xbox controller or you don't own an Xbox, you can just buy the shoes, which will be only a day later. I'll give you that release date in a moment. Now the pair comes housed in a special box that holds the controller. I'll share that with you in a moment. But again, this pair features a mismatch theme. So we have the Roadrunner on the inside of the tongue of the right shoe and while E. Coyote's hand holding a sign that reads help on the left shoe. The insoles also feature both characters and we also have Toon Squad on the tongue labels as well as riding on the air units. So for the Xbox bundle pack, this releases on July 15th for 220. And if you just want the shoes, that will release on July 16th for 160. 2020, we were expecting to see the Nike SB Dunk High Strawberry Cough release. Now, this is a 420 inspired release, and there's been multiple reasons why I heard the shoes never hit retailers. One of them, and what I kind of believe, is the fact that it has a strawberry coughing by the hill. And due to COVID, it probably isn't a good look for the brand. I totally get it, although. I believe context matters, and in this case, we know what it represents, and it's definitely not COVID, but they just want to make sure they're doing the right thing, I guess. Anyways, the release never happened. I do know there is some pairs going around that are authentic, but I honestly think for the most part, there's a lot of fakes going through hands of people that believe they're real. Now, why am I talking about the shoe since it never released? Well, a few days ago, official images popped up on Nike's server, and usually that means that a release is coming. However, for this pair, there is no additional information. What I heard is the pair was scrapped. I also heard that they were going to release it without the strawberry cough by the hill, but if they've already produced the pairs, it wouldn't make sense to bring them all back and then get rid of them or destroy them and then recreate the shoe without the strawberry cough. And I don't think you can just remove it. So as of right now, this is just a weird coincidence that they popped up. The last time I checked, these weren't going to release, but I'm waiting to hear back from a few people. Hopefully I'll have that information soon. But let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think Nike SB should go ahead and release the strawberry cough? This is the first time I'm hearing about KCDC, which is a skate shop out of Brooklyn, but they are collaborating with Nike SP to celebrate the shop's 20th anniversary. And what we're getting is the SP Dunk High you see here. I'm not gonna lie, I actually really like this shoe. And to go over it briefly, it features pink suede on the base while a lighter shade of pink lands on the overlays. Black leather fills in the swoosh, the same shade also hits the laces, midsole, liner, and heel tab. On the tongue, we have KCDC 2001, along with KCDC logos on the heel pull tabs, and a hand-drawn graphic on the pink and green insoles. Finishing the look is a gum rubber outsole. At the time of recording, we don't have a release date nor a time frame. They are expected to release sometime this year, hopefully this summer, but if not, then more than likely fall. Back in 2019, we saw the Night of Mischief SB Dunk Low release, and for 2021, they're going to return with the Night of Mischief 2.0. Now, for this pair, it's inspired by mummies. Now, I know I'm going to sound like a hype beast, but I really like what Nike SB is doing lately. I just can't ever get my hands on a pair. And honestly, I wouldn't buy it resell just because I don't feel a lot of these are worth the resell. Anyways, to get back to the shoes, it features tearaway uppers and it has layers which mimics a mummy. We have a very light turquoise shade on the suede swoosh and eyes on the hill. On the inside of the tongue, we have the eye of Horus along with toilet paper and grass on the insoles. Now, what's going to stick out the most is the glow-in-the-dark detailing which hits the tongue label, spider on the left toe, hill tab, midsole, and the rubber outsole. As far as a release date goes, this pair is expected to release during October, and no retail price as of yet. Here is some info that I've been sitting on for a while. I had planned on leaking it next week, but it actually came out a few days ago. And this is probably one of the reasons why I want to make a Discord, just for the leaks that aren't extremely important to let you guys know who are joined and a part of the group. 
And of course, I will include it in the video, but I just wanted to get the Jordan stuff out of the way. But if you haven't seen or heard, the Nike Air Zoom Flight 95 OG Black Metallic is returning in 2022. Now, there might be other colorways. This one is confirmed. And the last time we saw the pair release was in 2015 for the 20th anniversary. Worn by Jason Kidd, when the pair last released, they were actually sitting on shelves. They were discounted pretty heavily, but I've noticed that there's a lot more attention towards Nike basketball when it comes to 90s releases. So it might be a different story this time around, but they are expected to release early 2022 and the retail price will be 160. Moving on to Jordan brand and we got another interesting Air Jordan 1 mid-releasing. This pair is being called Red Patent due to the fact that it features red patent leather on the overlays. Now that part isn't really interesting, but more so the geometric print that lands on the ankle. That print is somewhat similar to what we see on the tongue of the Air Jordan 7. However, it's not quite there. So I kind of wonder what the theme is that they're going for. Anyways, other details includes white on the base, midsole, tongue branding and wings, and then we have an icy blue translucent outsole. Unfortunately, no release date for this pair. They are expected to release sometime this summer and like the other mids I've talked about or even the lows, whenever retailers get them in, they'll just throw them on the shelf. The retail price is 115. Jordan brand just unveiled the 2021 K54 collection, which includes the Air Jordan 5, the Air Jordan 1 Low, and the Air Jordan 35. Now we don't have the best images of the Air Jordan 1 Low, or the Air Jordan 35. However, we do have official photos of this year's Air Jordan 5. As well, they're releasing matching t-shirts, hoodies, jackets, and shorts. Now I'm going to read a quote from Nike, which gives you a little bit more background on the inspiration. This year, we created a K54 graphic inspired by traditional West African fabric patterns. We wanted to modernize the look add some Parisian flair and ultimately match the energy of the event and its incredible community. Now, the collection will first release at Paris House of Innovation store on July 8th and then at select retailers including Nike.com on July 10th. Unfortunately, there isn't a retail price breakdown of each model, but I'm sure that will pop up in the next several days. Now, the next pair I wanted to talk about is the Air Jordan 5 K54 Friends and Family. Now, each year, whenever K54 releases an Air Jordan collection, there's that one main model, and they also have a Friends and Family edition, which doesn't release to the public. We have the same situation here, and I'm gonna be honest, I like the Friends and Family pair more than I like the retail pair. The Friends and Family pair, it comes with black suede across the base, and the same West African fabric patterns are seen throughout. Both the retail and Friends and Family pair will feature the patterns. We have translucent netting on the panels, the K54 branding we can see just behind it, a 3M reflective tongue, and I can't really see the hill. We only have the one photo, possibly, We'll get to see more images in the next few days. But yeah, I honestly wish they would bring this pair out instead. But let me know your guys' opinion. Do you like the retail release or the F and F? The next Air Jordan 1 High 85 to release will take place in 2022, and it's being called College Navy. Now, what you're looking at is a Photoshop, and the actual look is not confirmed yet, so it's possible some things could change. However, I think the color blocking is a safe bet. Typically, when it comes to the Air Jordan 1 High 85, we have either OG sample colorways or PEs, and I'm sure a lot of you can see that this pair has the Georgetown color blocking. Now, between 85 and 86, Nike did produce a sample pair in this colorway, and on the ankle, Hoyas was embroidered. I'll throw in a picture of that sample. Now, it would be cool if Jordan Brand actually embroidered Hoyas onto the shoe. I highly doubt that will happen. And because of this sample, this is why I believe that this color blocking will be pretty on point. There might be some small changes but I'm still waiting to hear back from some people to let me know about the color blocking just so I can confirm it and spread that info to you guys. 
Now the official colorway is College Navy, Summit White, and Tech Gray, and they are expected to release during February 2022 for 200. Now I think this is going to be another All-Star Weekend release, although that's not confirmed, but let me know your thoughts on this pair down below. If they wind up releasing and looking just like this, will you buy? In a previous video, I went over the upcoming Air Jordan 3 camo, and at that time, the details weren't really known. All that was known is that the pair would feature some sort of camouflage pattern, but other than that, Holiday 2021 was the time frame, so very vague. But now, we have additional information, and what you're looking at on the screen is an accurate representation of what's releasing. Now, this is a sketch done by Z Sneakerhead Z, and it has a what the camo like theme. Now, according to the description, they will feature woodland camo, leaf camo, and rain camo. So you can expect it to look like this. And another interesting detail is that the hill will feature Velcro and come with patches. So you can remove them, place them, or even place your own on there. I thought that part was pretty cool, but the overall look of the shoe, it's definitely wild. I don't think I could pull this off. Salutes to anybody who can. And as for the release date, we don't have one still. But like I mentioned, they are expected to debut holiday 2021. And the retail price is expected to be 190. However, it could change. It could actually be a bit more. And you can expect more information soon. Let me know your thoughts on this pair down below. As it stands right now, I'm not really a fan of them. I don't think I will be, but things could change once we get an actual first look. 2022 will bring us a new Air Jordan 1 band, but in this case, they're actually called Rebellion Air. Now, the pair isn't inspired by the OG Air Jordan 1 in black and red, but more so the commercial. Now, I would insert the commercial here so you guys could see. However, I think I might get a copyright strike, so I don't want to do that. But later on in the video, I will include a little bit of audio from the commercial since that is considered fair use. And one of the quotes is also seen on the shoes. So the pair will feature a black, white, and particle gray colorway. It somewhat has the shadow Air Jordan 1 color blocking. The shade of gray will be different. And written across the entire upper is they cannot stop you from wearing them. So the guy narrating the original commercial, he says the following. On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. Fortunately, the NBA can't stop you from wearing them. Air Jordans from Nike. So Jordan Brand replaced the NBA with they, probably because Nike and Jordan Brand have a good relationship with the NBA, so they don't want to take direct shots. But other than that, this pair will feature distressed leather across the upper, and the rumor is that they possibly could feature 3M reflective, so the writing you see throughout, you'll actually only see that when the light hits it correctly. Although I was told that there was no mention of that in a Jordan brand meeting, so it's not confirmed. Now, the most interesting part of the shoe, at least to me, is the red X on the hill. Yes, this pair will feature a red X. What you're looking at is an accurate Photoshop of what's releasing. I forgot to mention that early on. There might be very minor changes, but overall, this is what we're getting. Now, you guys might remember in 2011, I believe, Jordan Brand released the Air Jordan 1 band in the OG colorway. They went straight to outlets, and I believe that was due to the insoles. They had the wrong year. That pair also features a X on the hill. That shoe is dope. I love that pair. But you might be wondering why they're calling them Rebellion Air. So the definition to Rebellion is resistance to or defiance of any authority, control, or tradition. Going back to the 85 season, Michael Jordan was fined each game he wore the shoes. Nike promised to pay the fines, and that was their way of advertising. This is the shoe that is banned by the NBA. So in a sense, Jordan Brand is telling a story how Michael Jordan was once a rebel. 
going forward, I'm going to call them Rebellion Air, although I might put in the title somewhere, Band 2022. Even though that's the story they're trying to tell, it's not actually the band shoe. But if you're looking forward to grabbing this pair, they will release sometime during March 2022. Unfortunately, we don't have a specific release date, and the retail price will be 170 But like always, let me know your thoughts down below. And that's going to do it for this video. Like always, I appreciate you guys for watching, and I hope you're having a fun, safe weekend. It's July 4th tomorrow, so I hope you guys are having fun, spending time with the family, and that's the real reason why I'm uploading this video on Saturday. More than likely, I wasn't going to do a video on Sunday night, just because I wanna chill for the whole day, eat, light some fireworks, relax with my kids and my girls. So I'll be back with a new video on Tuesday. With that being said, let me know what you liked or disliked in the comments. And before I get out of here, like always, greatly appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe by hitting the red button below. Again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to sneakerfiles.com. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe.